Hello my friends, today we're going to be discussing everything you could possibly want to know about Hermes' silk scarves and silk creations. We're going to be discussing how these silk scarves are made, what makes them so special, the different sizes and prints that they come in, and I'm also going to be sharing my silk scarf collection and how I use these pieces because let me tell you, none of these silk scarves have ever been around my neck. So if you'd like to learn some new fun tips and tricks when it comes to taking advantage of your silk scarf collection then make sure to give this video a thumbs up subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet and keep on watching believe it or not there was a point in time when hermes was better known for their silk scarves and silk ties than their actual bags and leather goods which is not surprising considering that some of these scarves are genuinely like a piece of art. Hermes has been producing silk scarves since 1937, if I'm not mistaken, and really not much has changed about their scarves since then, other than maybe the volume and the fact that back then they used the highest quality Chinese silk, whereas now their silk comes from Brazil. And I think it takes, I am trying to remember all these details from an event that I went to a few years ago in New York in celebration of Hermes' silk scarves or also known as Carays, where they basically showed the behind the scenes of creating one of these scarves with us. And I think they said something along the lines of it taking 250 Mulberry silk moth cocoons to create a single 90 centimeter scarf which happens to be the size that I collect and obviously as you can imagine these are made of the highest quality silk they are of course a hundred percent silk these are hand printed and hand rolled and another thing that makes these incredibly unique other than the outstanding quality is how these prints are actually created because of course Hermes has their in-house designers but they also work with independent designers who are allowed to create any design they want. They are inspired by everything from nature through literature, architecture, all the way to the brand's equestrian heritage. So there are going to be reoccurring elements, key signatures of the house that you'll see season after season but each season they will introduce an incredibly unique design, which is because they are not all designed by the same person, but by independent artists who of course Hermes hand picks to make sure that they fit into their aesthetic and into their sort of ethos, but they bring their own artistic freedom and their own artistic touch and approach to each and every single one of their designs. And as you can see, some of these cars are genuinely like a piece of art. I mean, you wouldn't be surprised if you saw one of these as a painting hanging in a gallery. And while these scarves are not individually hand painted by an artist, they kind of look like it. And that's because you can really see and pick out each individual detail, which is because of how these scarves are created. So once the artist has put their design to paper, Hermes will take those designs, they will digitalize them, they will break them down to individual colors, then they will create additional colorways and they usually don't release every single colorway that they create, but the majority of them will be made available to the public. Once those colorways have been created and approved by the artist, Hermes will go on to engraving individual frames for each print based on the original design, which is why you can pick out each and every single detail because of how detail oriented these frames are that Hermes engraves. And then once they have the frame done, they can go on to printing the scarves, which is not as straightforward as it sounds because each color is printed as its own layer, just so you can get this richness and this vibrancy in each individual color. It's not enough to create the designs as detail oriented as possible, but you also have to make sure that the colors blend perfectly and they stay true to the artist's original vision. So sometimes they have to go back and forth, back and forth with the printer up to 15 to 20 times even, depending on how many colors the design is made up of. So as you can imagine, these scarves don't only feel incredibly luxurious, but they are genuinely treated and created like a piece of art and once the design has been finalized on the silk pieces then they are finally rolled and finished 
by hand. So these scarves are genuinely like a piece of art that deserve to be admired, whether you wear them around your neck or not, which personally I don't wear silk scarves around my neck, but I do have some scarves from Hermes that I love, especially in the winter, which are my cashmere mufflers. I did want to mention them here since we're already talking about Hermes scarves. So I personally don't wear my silk scarves. Instead, I tend to wear my cashmere mufflers, which I do have in the reversible version. You can get them in a single solid color, but they tend to be quite hard to find. And if you can get a two in one, why not? So these scarves are one color on one side and another on the other. So this one is in black and gray. It's a hundred percent cashmere. It is the most beautiful, thick, weighty, but extremely, extremely, I mean, just buttery soft cashmere. I have the most sensitive neck and these I have never once had any issues with. They, it doesn't get any more luxurious than these if you're looking for a cashmere scarf. So I have this one in black and gray. And then I picked this up before I went to Denmark on a trip, which is a trip that I vlog for you. So if you haven't seen that, I'll make sure to have my Denmark vlogs linked down below for you. But anyway, this scarf is again in black and then it is navy on the other side. Both of these are 100% cashmere and they are just the softest, coziest thing. These really allow me to wear even thinner jackets in the fall winter because these are so warm. Once I have these wrapped around my neck, I am fairly if ever cold. So I do love these. And if you're not a fan of silk scarves, don't think that Hermes doesn't have something for you because these are definitely pieces that you can invest in and they will last a really, really, really long time. But let's get back to what we came here for, which is my silk scarf collection. Now, Hermes silk scarves do come in a huge range of different sizes at this point. You can buy scarves as small as 20 centimeter. And I think the largest silk scarf that I've ever seen was maybe 140 centimeters, but I tend to prefer the 90 centimeter scarves. Of course, we can also talk about twillies in case you're interested in twillies. Twillies were originally designed as basically a tiny little silk accessory to be worn around your wrist in your hair instead of a tie tied as a bow around your neck or even on your pants it wasn't technically designed as a back accessory which is how people tend to use them these days wrapped around the handles of their bags if you've been with me for a while you're not going to be surprised to hear that i am not the biggest fan of twillies on bags especially not birkins and Kelly's just because I feel like there's already so much going on on a Birkin and a Kelly that the last thing you need is a Twilly added onto the handles. When it comes to more simplistic bags, something like the Picatin or the Her bag, I think a Twilly can be a nice touch, but when it comes to more ornate, more, not even ornate, but more elaborate bags, Twillies don't really add too much to a bag. Instead, they kind of take away from the overall look and feel of the bag. They somehow are able to cheapen the look of your bag. And it's not like Twillies are a must have because your Hermes bags were designed to withstand the test of time. Your handles are not going to fall apart without you using Twillies on them, especially if you're so rough on your bags that you need Twillies to protect the handles. There's going to be a lot more that you have to worry about than just the handles and Twillies are made of silk. So they're quite delicate. If you're really rough on your bags, they're not going to last that long either. You'll probably have to replace them once, if not twice each year, which really adds up. And for that kind of money, you might as well just replace the handles on your bags in a few years time, rather than purchasing new twillies season after season, unless you love the look of them, in which case, you go ahead and enjoy them. But personally, I'm not the biggest fan of twillies on Birkins and Kellys and more elaborate bags. Now, when it comes to me styling my silk pieces, I have to be honest with you, none of these silk pieces have ever been worn out. The two ways in which I like styling these is really around my home. And the first way is not something that I can personally take credit for. It's something that I was fully inspired by Hermes. It's actually a service that they used to offer back in the day. It's not something that they really do anymore. In fact, I bought two scarves to ask them to turn them into pillowcases, which is the first way that we'll be discussing. And they told me that they discontinued this service or they stopped offering this service. 
I think the season before or a couple of seasons before I asked, but since I already had the scarves, I ended up taking them to my tailor and I asked them to turn it into a pillowcase for me, which it turned out pretty perfectly, even if I do say so myself. So the first way of enjoying a silk scarf is to have them turned into a pillowcase. And with that, let me introduce you to my first silk scarf, which is an Hermes' iconic breed, the Gala print. And it's not just any breed of Gala print, it's their so-called Shadow Breed of Gala, which as you can see is called the Shadow Breed of Gala because you cannot really see the actual ceremonial bridles, only the outline of them. And then there are also these tiny little bee embroideries or embossings more like it all across the scarf. This is a scarf that I found in the RMS sale a few years ago and I was so shocked to find it there because the Brita Gala print is something that has been around since 1957 if I'm not mistaken and it's an iconic print that gets reinterpreted season after season so I was so happy to find this in the sale and this was the first piece that I had turned into a decorative pillowcase so it's not something that I sleep on but it's something that I had on my couch in our previous apartment and in case you're wondering how do you go about turning a silk scarf into a silk pillowcase without Hermes's help it couldn't be any more simple. All you need is a good tailor because the idea of a scarf being turned into a pillowcase is so insanely simple, especially if you go for a scarf in size 90, which is what I did. All you have to do is basically take each four corner of your silk scarf, turn it inward. You'll end up with a perfect square because these scarves are 90 by 90, so you just make them slightly smaller. And once you have all the four corners pinched together, you just basically stitch them down across each line. You add a zipper and you end up with a perfect square, which then you can start using as a pillowcase. It was really, really simple. And I love that I am making it sound so simple when I really had nothing to do with it. But based on my tailor's feedback, it was really an easy task. All they had to do is match up each line, stitch them down, and then add a long zipper in the back just so you can really easily slide a pillow in there and then obviously take it out if you no longer want to use this or if you want to get your pillowcase dry cleaned. So the first pillowcase that I had made was out of this Brita Gala scarf, which is definitely a print that I would love to pick up more scarves in because it is one of my most favorite prints by Hermes. And then the other one was quite a special scarf from a few years ago. Hermes does play around with their scarves, not only with the prints, but also the different motifs, the different elements that they have done, even washable scarves, double-sided scarves. So it is the same print on each side, but each side is a different color. And then the one that I have here is design that is quite special. They split a silk scarf into two different prints, but instead of the prints being printed on two different pieces of silk, they are seamlessly printed on the exact same sheet of silk, which let me show you. I think that's going to make more sense that way. So this is a really unique design because it features two completely different but complementary silk prints by Hermes, which is going to be this one. So on one side you have these sort of night figures and then on the other side you have this little bit more abstract looking equestrian harness or almost like a leash on the other side with some equestrian hardware which I thought would make the perfect pillowcase because it is split down the middle so it is just a little bit more interesting. Now this is a lot more eye-catching and a lot more busy than my Brita Gala print, but believe it or not, these looked incredible side by side on the same couch. So if you find a unique Hermes scarf, something that has a little bit more interest to it, and it's not something that you think is worth wearing around your neck, because obviously you will not see all these incredible details, having them turn into a pillowcase is really a fun way to infuse a little bit more Hermes into your home, especially if you don't want to get something like an Avalon blanket or an Avalon pillow, just because so many other people have those pieces. As home accessories, this is a really unique way of going about it because you can choose from not only scarves that are currently available at Hermes, but you can even pick up some vintage scarves and you can really customize not only the color palette, but also how busy or how minimal you want to go with your design. So. 
if you're a true fan of Hermes and you're trying to have more Hermes spaces around your home, having silk pillowcases made is really something that I haven't seen too many people talking about. In fact, I've never seen anyone talk about it. I've only ever heard of this service by Hermes and it's such a shame that they no longer offer it. But I think if you have a good tailor, it's definitely something that you should ask them about. But since I have a lot more silk scarves that I love than couch surface, I cannot turn every single one of my silk scarves into a pillowcase. So the other thing that I used to do with my scarves is I used to have them on my walls genuinely as a piece of art. And what I used to do that was this, which is the Hermes scarf hanging system, which I had up in our apartment in New York. And if you have no idea what this is, if you've never seen it before, if you've never heard about it, and you kind of want to envision what it would look like in real life, think back to the last time you read Hermes. If you remember seeing their scarves on their walls, this is the system that they used to hang those scarves, which is a really really genius system. I bought this again from Hermes. I'm not sure if this is something that they still sell because I haven't seen this being sold in quite a while, but I would definitely ask. It's a really, really simple design, but the way it's done is really quite genius. And I do think that I have a more in-depth video on this. So in this set, you get four of these screws that actually go into your wall and then you get these attachments that you can attach to whichever scarf you want and you do get the exact measurements in this little kit. So you have to decide which scarf size you want to continue displaying on your wall. You cannot change them because obviously these screws will go into your wall. So I think you have to choose whether you want to have a 90 centimeter scarf up on your wall and you have to set it up based on those measurements or if you want to display a 140 centimeter scarf, of course I went for 90 because 140 is really quite large, but you just have to take the measurements from the kit, put these in your wall. I personally asked my handyman to do it. And then you get these little attachments that you can attach to any one of your scarves and they make it so, so easy to change your scarves. And you might be wondering, why don't you just frame your scarves? Wouldn't that be easier? I guess it would be a little bit, easier than having to screw these into your wall. But the reason I love this system is because it allows you to change your scarves really easily. If you frame a scarf, it's not going to be the easiest to take it out if you want to start using it. Whereas with this system, it is super easy and seamless to change the scarves that you have on display. All you have to do is use these magnetic attachments to either put them up on display or take them off. And since these were specifically designed for your silk pieces, you can be assured that these won't damage your silk scarves in any shape or form. All these are, are really just strong magnets with this really soft, almost suede feeling insert in there just to make sure that these don't leave any marks on your silk pieces. So if you're a silk lover and you want to not only appreciate your silk pieces as part of your outfit, but you also want to see all the beautiful art-like details and you want to admire them from the far and display them around your home as the pieces of art that they truly are, I think this is the best way to and do last it. Last but not least, I quickly want to walk you through my silk scarf collection. The scarves that at one point I had up on my wall and my scarf collection is kind of all over the place. I have some scarves that are a little bit more muted, some that are more colorful, some that are more abstract and some that are almost painting-like, but I'm going to be going in no particular order. I just pull out a scarf and see what I can tell you about it. So why don't we start with this one, which was definitely not one of my first scarves. This is one that I actually got in Vegas, which I do have to say that these scarves also make incredible souvenirs. What can you call something as expensive as these a souvenir? Well, let's just call them a pricey souvenir, a pricey memory. So if you go on a trip and you stop by an Hermes boutique, these are an amazing piece to pick up because these will forever remind you of that trip or that piece of memory. So this I actually bought in Vegas and it is this, what would you call it? It's these almost Broadway looking theater signs and it actually spells out Hermes if you look really close. So you have an H in the middle, then you have an E, an R, an M, an E, and then an S 
which I mean, you know how to spell Hermes, but the reason I bought this is because it reminded me of Vegas and because it was in Hermes's iconic orange color, which I just loved. I never thought I would ever add anything orange to my collection, but I thought this was the perfect way to infuse just a little bit of color, not only into my home, but also into my life and my collection. And I think this was called the Hermes electric score. Moving on to probably the quirkiest print in my Hermes collection, not the quirkiest print that Hermes has ever done because they, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, their artists can really be inspired by anything. So they definitely have some really vibrant, vivid prints out there. But this is the one that I own that to me is the quirkiest, but I am a big superhero fan and I'm also just fascinated by outer space. So this is definitely something that was right up my alley. I think I ended up buying this for, I think it was one year that I bought this for Halloween and it, it is a print that was available in some pretty bright and eye-catching colors, but I ended up going for the most muted color combination, which is this print there I'm as named Space Shopping, which features, first of all, this weird horse superhero that wasn't my favorite detail the reason i bought this was first of all the spaceships i love that these spaceships were shopping at hermes and i also thought that this print was quite architectural obviously it features the hermes mothership the footboard boutique you can see the details of the secret garden on top you can even see their settle making department and i just love this print and i love the fact that it was the Faubourg Boutique at night, and I am, as I mentioned, a big fan of outer space, so having those little spaceships shopping at Hermes there, I mean, clearly if there's an intelligent life form out there, they know where to shop. So this was the perfect way to add a little bit of spooky vibe into my apartment around Halloween. And then moving on to two completely different prints, let's start with this one, which was an insanely popular print. I think this was introduced around 2018, 2019. I do remember unboxing this on YouTube, so it couldn't have been that long ago. But one thing that you have to know about Hermes silk pieces is that if they ever feature an Hermes bag, an Hermes bag charm like a rodeo, those silk scarves are guaranteed to sell out. I'm not exactly sure why, but people tend to go crazy for those pieces. So this print was no exception, which actually features the x-ray of a Kelly bag, which obviously it is not polite to ask someone what's in their bag, but when it comes to this scarf, you don't have to because you can actually see inside the bag. They have actual Hermes products in there, like an Hermes lipstick, an Hermes envelope card holder, some Lucky Charms, a Ferrandol necklace, someone's skis, a sewing kit, and last but not least, you cannot miss the detail of the Twilly. The fact that you have a self Twilly printed onto a self scarf was just, I think, a really, really beautiful touch. Now, they, these scarves did come in a few different colors. They definitely came in some fun, vibrant colors like pink, orange, even blue. And while I loved the print itself, the reason I got this wasn't for the print, but more the colorway, because it's so rare for MS to do something in such a muted, neutral color combination that I had to jump on this and I was so lucky to get it before it sold out. I think it sold out. They stopped making it, but it was recently brought back. So I think it is something that you should still be able to get your hands on. I'm not exactly sure if you can still buy it in the gray colorway, but I have recently seen it. I want to say in orange. So make sure that you ask about this if you love the print. It was called, I think, the Please Check-In Scarf in size 90. And this is definitely a scarf that I felt went really well with my interior aesthetic. And then last but not least, I have to share with you my most favorite scarf. Not only my most favorite scarf that I own, but the most beautiful scarf that I personally have ever seen. And obviously beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so you might actually prefer some other scarves in my collection, but to me, this is the most elaborate, most detailed, most art-like scarf that I have ever seen. It is just mind-blowing, all the little details that you can find on this scarf, which is actually inspired by a Shakespeare play. This is actually inspired by Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream, which you can see here. And it's not only just an act from that play, but it is the play being played on stage, which just makes it even more special to me. And I had this up on my wall for 
I think at least a year, if not longer than that. And I was just blown away by the fact that any time I had a close look at this scarf, I was able to discover a new detail, a new character, a new flower, a new color, or something that I hadn't paid attention to before. This scarf to me is just genuinely the definition of a piece of art. And I also love the moon, which I wanted to emphasize on this scarf. So I ended up putting a light behind the moon detail. So at night I could turn on the light and it would shine through that little moon detail, which I just also love. So this is by far one of my most prized possessions when it comes to Hermes. This is the one silk scarf that I would never part ways with because this to me, is genuinely like the Mona Lisa. It is just so incredibly breathtaking. My friends, this completes today's video on everything you have to know about Hermes' silk scarves and silk creations. I hope you guys enjoyed this peek into my silk collection. And please let me know in the comments section, what are your favorite silk pieces by Hermes? Do you own any silk scarves? If you do, which one is your favorite brand? I would love to have a look. Or if there are any other brands that you prefer over RMS for silk, please do share. And while you're down there, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. But just know that I really appreciate you being here and watching and I hope to see you back here with a new video really, really soon.